I'm uh, Venki Munikrishnan. I'm a consultant colorectal surgeon, clinical lead at the Institute of Colorectal Surgery at Apollo Hospitals, Chennai. Okay, colorectal cancer is one of the commonest cancers in the world. If you look at the Western world, the incidence is as high as 35 per 100,000. Compare that with India, uh, the incidence in India is about 4 per 100,000. But then we have a population of 1.4 billion, so we still uh, have about 35,000 cancers uh, in India itself. But the problem is our assessment or pickup rates are lower because lack of awareness. So we don't know the true incidence potentially. And, and again, with, with, uh, with uh, urbanization, uh, dietary changes and, 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 and change in social life, I think these cancers are going to get uh, increased in numbers. And again, people are living longer as well. So we're going to see more and more of this. And I think we should be prepared to deal with this huge problem. Traditionally, colorectal cancer has been dealt with open surgery. But two decades ago, laparoscopic surgery was introduced. It revolutionized uh, uh, you know, uh, management of gastrointestinal cancers, smaller cuts, uh, quicker recovery. Uh, costs were also brought down eventually. But again, particularly for rectal cancer, where the rectum is in the pelvis, it was technically a very challenging operation and difficult to train people. That's where I think the introduction of robotic technology has revolutionized what we do in rectal cancer. We are able to do very precise dissections in, the, in a narrow pelvis, for example, and I think the technology helps us to achieve that. So traditionally, if you look at the surgical practice in India, uh, for example, colorectal cancer has been dealt with mostly by oncologists who deal with everything, uh, top to bottom. And again, sometimes surgical gastroenterologists do the same. But you know, I went to England to get trained in, in, the, in, the, in the late 90s. By that time, subspecialization had come in the waves because people are living longer, disease processes are getting more complex, treatments are getting more challenging and expensive. So the belief was that if you do organ-specific practice, you dealt with both, as long as you know how to deal with a particular organ, it can be either cancer or non-cancer, you will get good at that. If you get good at that, you do more volumes, your outcomes are better, and that benefits the patient. And it will also bring down the cost because you, know, you try to innovate, achieve the best results in the shortest period of time. And so as, as a progression to that, so when I finished my training and came back in 2010 to India, I had the opportunity to meet Dr. Reddy, who were uh, the chairman of Apollo Hospitals, who was uh, really pushing for this organ-specific practice because he, he, he believed that that is what India needs as the next step. And also robotic technology, which is going to help us achieve some of the results. And so we initiated a program called the, uh, you know, the, the Apollo Colorectal Surgery Program, where we, we, we sort of started subspecialization and formed a team. So it, this, and I think more and more you would see that all disease processes need to be managed in a multidisciplinary team approach because that's very important. It's not just me. It is the team who work as a group to achieve the best results. And the team includes radiologists, pathologists, uh, gastroenterologists, medical gastroenterologists who all sit together. So if you get a patient with colorectal cancer, for example, we, ad we identify it, we confirm it. Then this patient is discussed in a multidisciplinary team meeting and we as a group identify the best treatment possible. So for example, rectal cancer patient, majority of our patients come in late because they, you know, they presume that this is just, uh, you know, hemorrhoids or bile self treat and every month we see several patients who've been treated wrongly. Mm -hmm. So most important in this scenario is that patients have the awareness that, you know, if symptoms are persistent for four weeks, they need to see some uh, specialist who can assess it. Now, once the diagnosis is made and the, this patient's results, reports are brought to this team, the multiple team which we sit around and then we make a decision what's best for the patient. For example, rectal cancer, the patient may need to have uh, radiation and chemotherapy prior to surgery so that we can shrink the tumor. Now, once that's done, we give it some time and then the operation is planned. Now, if it is a very advanced tumor, we may have to do open surgery, but if it is, you know, if we can shrink the tumor or it is reasonably at an early stage, then these advanced technology robotics will really make a difference uh, in providing a very minimally uh, invasive approach so that the cuts are smaller, you know, the, the, the tissue handling is less, so the tissue recovery post-surgery is quicker, patients get out of bed quicker, the complications like chest, chest infection, wound infection is much lesser. So I think that is how we've 
evolve this program and we are seeing clear benefits to that end. So one of the big challenges when you introduce new technology is somebody's got to pay for it. So the cost is, you know, that is what happened 20 years ago when laparoscopy was, you know, the open surgeons just were worried saying that, you know, how are we going to you know, afford these costs? But the more and more you do, your, your, the volumes go up, your time comes down, and you innovate, and the cost comes down. And I'm, I'm convinced that's what's going to happen with robotic surgery. In our own practice, uh, our robotic program was set up two years ago, and we already have one of the busiest robotic colorectal programs in the country. Mm -hmm.